Revelation chapter 21, we're going to start in verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Lord, as we come to you this morning, we thank you for the reading of your word. We ask that you be with us as we take that word. Help us to use it to, uh, to grow closer to you this morning. And all these things we pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, so what I just read here in Revelation chapter 21, this is hope for one day, uh, one day in the future. This is the, oh, this is what we hope for. If you're a Christian, if you're saved this morning, this is what we hope for. But some people need hope for today, right? I know a lot of people are going through, I know personally a lot of people are going through stuff right now in their life. They need hope today, not in for the future, not for uh, when we get where we're going, but hope for today while we're still here. And and we all go through things, you know. Uh, I don't know how, how many other people can relate to this, but I'll be perfectly fine one day, and then for no reason at all, the next day I'm just like, just gloomy for some reason. Just don't feel like myself. Uh, no motivation, you know, uh, and, and so I don't know if anybody else can relate to that, but we all go through things. And it could be little things, it could be big things, but where, let's talk about where disappointment comes from. And to do that, we got to go from the back of the book all the way to the front. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to read first uh, verses 5 through 9. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 15. I don't normally do that, but just for time's sake, I'm going to skip a few verses. Verse 15, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So, to, to, to figure out where disappointment comes from, we've got to go all the way back to the beginning, right? When man was created, the garden was created, these trees, they had all these trees. I don't know how many trees there were, but they were all good to eat except for one, right? Yeah, right. Just one. Oh, uh, so, so we started out in a garden, and basically what we opened up with in Revelation 21 is talking about going back to that place, that paradise. And I'm just going to call that a garden too, right? So we started in a garden, we're going to a garden. But right now we're in the middle. This is where uh, where we're stuck. And let's, let's just remember here that uh, right after this, what I, right after I just read here in, in verses 15 through 17, where God looks at Adam,